Henry VIII, throughout his reign as the King of England, is known for being a notorious and brutal monarch who ordered the execution of some of his closest friends. He would send Thomas Cromwell and Sir Thomas More to the executioner's scaffold on Tower Hill, where they were both beheaded by axe. But near to Tower Hill is the Tower of London, where two of Henry's wives would go to their deaths within the walls of the iconic and formidable fortress. The tower got its reputation for brutality during the Tudor period, but especially for Anne Boleyn's date with the executioner. Anne was Henry's second wife, who changed the face of English history. So that Anne would take to the king's bed, Henry would plunge England into a religious turmoil, breaking from Rome and claiming that he was the supreme head of the Church of England, which offended a great number of people. But Anne Boleyn's execution, which is one of the most harrowing and shocking of the Tudor period, if not English history, but the testimony of a woman who has been forgotten about in history condemned her to death. But what is the story of the mistress of Henry VIII that sent Anne Boleyn to her execution? Elizabeth Somerset was born Elizabeth Brown around 1502 and she lived in Benchworth in Surrey. Her father was Sir Anthony Brown, who during the reign of Henry VII was a standard bearer of England. He was also the governor of Queensborough Castle and the constable of Calais, and all of these positions were key roles in England and the royal court. He was also seen as a trusted courtier during the reign of Henry VIII, and his wife, Lady Lucy Neville, was also important. Elizabeth's half-brother was also Sir William Fitzwilliam, the first Earl of Southampton, who became the treasurer of the household, a role which was important, in which he would be in control of the royal finances at court. With this, it shows the Brown family were very well connected at court and were close to the monarchy. Interestingly, her half-brother would become a key player in the downfall of Anne Boleyn also, and he was very active in the inquiry against the second wife of Henry VIII and Queen that saw her accused of treason, incest and adultery. Around 1508, Elizabeth's sister Anne married Sir Charles Brandon, who later became the Duke of Suffolk, and with this Elizabeth was the aunt of Lady Anne Brandon, and her younger sister Lady Mary Brandon. But before 1527, Elizabeth married Henry Somerset, the second Earl of Worcester, and then became the Countess of Worcester on the 15th of April 1526. Henry's first wife, Lady Margaret, had died without any children, but her husband was a very wealthy and prominent landowner and earl. This, of course, brought Elizabeth to the royal court, and during the reign of Henry VIII, she was there much of the time with her husband. Elizabeth, though, would serve as one of Anne Boleyn's ladies of her privy chamber. This was one of the most exclusive roles at court, as Elizabeth would be able to tend to the Queen's closest needs, and she would get one-on-one -on -one access with her at times. Elizabeth Somerset was close to Anne Boleyn, and they would confide in each other, and following Anne's coronation, a huge feast was held. To solidify her status as well, though, Elizabeth Somerset stood to the direct left and next to the Queen, and as her lady-in-waiting, Elizabeth's duties during this huge occasion was to hold a fine cloth in front of the Queen's face when she wanted to spy out dinner, and she would wipe her face. Throughout her time as Queen of England, Elizabeth spent much of her time by Anne's side, and because of how close she was to the Queen, it's likely also that Elizabeth knew about the secrets of her and Henry VIII's marriage. Elizabeth would probably talk about the King and Queen's bedroom antics with the Queen, and because of this, she was privy to very important information. However, what is also interesting is that there were rumours that Elizabeth Somerset the Countess of Worcester, despite being close to Anne Boleyn, was a royal mistress who slept with Henry VIII. Henry did have a number of mistresses, including Mary Boleyn, the sister of his future second wife, and it was claimed that he had many illegitimate children with these women. One, Henry Fitzroy, would be almost treated like the heir to the throne before his premature death. But the king's lust for women, especially the ladies-in-waiting of his wives, led to him having a disastrous love life, but sleeping with the king was encouraged by many husbands of women at court. Some husbands were happy if the king took a shine to their wives, as they would then believe they would get rewarded and favour from the king through their wives sleeping with him. As mentioned, 
there were allegations that Elizabeth did sleep with the king, either before or during his marriage to Anne, but this would have definitely interfered with their relationship. However, to show how close she was to Anne, Elizabeth secretly borrowed £100 from the Queen, and this was never repaid, even when Anne was imprisoned inside the Tower of London. There was also records of another payment made on the 4th of February 1530 by the King's personal funds for a midwife for the Countess of Worcester, and this was probably arranged by Anne Boleyn. However, because the pair were very close, this also meant that when Anne Boleyn fell from grace, there was danger that Elizabeth Somerset could fall with her. But this isn't what happened, and instead, it's believed that Elizabeth Somerset, to possibly save her own skin, turned against Anne the Queen and her close friend. It has been said that, as Anne's lady-in-waiting and close confidant, that she would have been aware of any misdemeanour of her affair, and might have been complicit with other adulterous acts. When Anne was accused of this, later, Henry VIII's fifth wife, Catherine Howard, would also be executed, but killed with her, was Jane Boleyn, who suffered the swing of the executioner's axe also. But she was complicit in the affairs of Catherine. Now, is it possible that Elizabeth feared that any such accusation against Anne regarding cheating could come back to cause problems with her? In 1536, Elizabeth Somerset then testified to Cromwell against Anne Boleyn. Cromwell had been tasked with getting Henry VIII out of the marriage to Anne, and he spun a web of lies and deceit and tried to gather any evidence he could to send Anne Boleyn to the executioner's block. Elizabeth Somerset gave Cromwell what he needed, and she said that Anne Boleyn had engaged in numerous adulterous affairs and acts with a handful of men, including Mark Smeaton, Henry Norris, a prominent courtier, and also her own brother, George Boleyn. The accusations against Anne highlighted that one of the King's Privy Councillors and her sister, as in Elizabeth, had observed the adulterous affairs. Elizabeth's brother, as mentioned, spoke out against Anne, and she encouraged him to look and interrogate Mark Smeaton and the Queen's own brother. It was said, Elizabeth said, I must not forget to tell you what seems to me to be the worst thing, which is often her brother has carnal knowledge of her in bed. Meaning Elizabeth accused Anne of incest with George, her brother. These accusations made by Elizabeth Somerset led to Anne Boleyn's downfall, and this was exactly what Thomas Cromwell wanted and needed. He had the evidence to charge Anne of the crimes that would result in her death. It's considered today that these charges and accusations are false, and that Anne was the victim of lies. But what is strange is that Elizabeth was considered the all-knowing lady-in-waiting that turned against her. It's possible she had been manipulated by her brother, or by testifying against her former mistress, that she was promised further advancement and wealth by Cromwell. The once close friends were no more. And there were other accusers, but Elizabeth was considered as the first ground, and the most important one when charges were raised against Anne. During the downfall of Anne Boleyn, Elizabeth was pregnant with another child, and the Queen even became concerned about the fate of this child while she was imprisoned in the Tower of London. It's likely she did not know Elizabeth spoke against her, but she is said much lamented my lady, or Worcester, because that her child did not stir in her body. But that year, Elizabeth would give birth to a daughter who was named Anne in honour of Anne Boleyn, who remained in prison before she was brought to the executioner's scaffold in Tower Green. However, in 1565, Elizabeth Somerset died. She would live to see the daughter of Anne Boleyn, Elizabeth I, reign over the country, and it's not known if she had a relationship with the Queen in any regard. She was buried in Chepstow, in Monmouthshire, in Wales, and she left behind four sons and four daughters on record, but it's believed that she had two more children, meaning she had in total ten. Her first-born daughter Anne would go on to marry Thomas Percy, the seventh Earl of Northumberland, and her first son would become the third Earl of Worcester. However, Elizabeth Somerset, the Countess of Worcester, for some reason turned against her close friend Anne Boleyn. She may have done this to protect herself from any accusations of danger, and she may have also done this as she was persuaded to do so by her brother, who was very vocal against her. It's not known her motives behind this, 
but she's also considered to have been one of Henry VIII's mistresses and women who slept with the infamous six-wifed King of England. Today, Elizabeth Somerset is an interesting figure whose testimony and evidence led to one of the most infamous executions in English history, with the Queen of England and wife of Henry VIII losing her head to a French swordsman inside the Tower of London. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to her remarkable history. Thank you.